What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. I know I'm recording this before the Super Bowl. Um, normally, I try to push this out, but with Super Bowl, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be watching. And it was surprising because I know I'm from a uh, Bengals area, but a lot of people were all, you know, talking to me at the show and stuff. And they're like, oh, who are you pulling for? And I said, I'd like to pull for the Bengals, but I said, I got to stand by my original pick of the Rams. And I was like, I don't know. They're that defense on the Rams. If they get hot, I said, I don't think Burrow's going to have an easy day. Nothing against him. I think he's a good quarterback and everything, but. Uh, I said that long run, I still have would like to see Joey B win, but Stafford's been in the league for so long under Detroit system, moves to L.A. I'd like to see him get a little bit more. I think Joey B's going to have plenty more opportunities down the road. Um, just That whole conference just has some hot young quarterbacks into it that are going to be good down the road. All right, guys, let me move on to the show here, because that was one of the things a lot of people were talking about. Like I said, when you're up in uh, Salem, Indiana, I don't know, I can't remember how far it is from Louisville, but for me, it was about an hour and 10, hour and 15 minute drive. Uh, first time out that way, it was pretty much a straight shot from the house, and I wish I could have uh, walked out, but they were starting at like these little snow flurries, and I didn't want to have the camera out during it, but like downtown Salem looked really, I don't know how to say it, um, it just had a look to it. It wasn't anything bad, but like a historical look. So uh, I know they're doing another show in April out there. I'm going to try to get some uh, pictures of uh, what the downtown looked like when I seen, just so you guys can see. Craziness. As you get older and through time, just stuff like that just catches your eye. Show overall was uh, really good. I got there about a half hour before they were scheduled to open, and the guy runs a show, Brad, you know, just lets me come on through. Picked through some stuff. Uh, there was a lot of nice stuff there. You'll see in the video and a couple pictures that I took that, you know, definitely some bigger end cards were there. I don't know if they moved at all. I know one guy had this LeBron James SP Authentic Auto, and a lot of people were trying to hit him up. And my word of advice was don't sell it unless you're comfortable selling it with the price you want, you know, don't, don't because you want to make some big sell and stuff like that there, sell it for less than what you think you should get for it. But overall, really good show. I'm going to go ahead and cut to the video. There's not much to it. Um, and then the couple pictures you guys will see is some of the cards that I saw and I just wanted to highlight in some people's displays. And the only reason there was no video of it, it was just, uh, I don't want to use the word crowded, but there was no elbow room type deal. And then I'll be back. We'll go over what I picked up. And we'll be right back. All right, pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff there. So I dug through a lot of boxes, a lot. And when you start finding people that have like six for five dollars, stuff like that, and you could spend the time and pull a chair up, it's always worth going through. So right off the bat, Derek Jeter, Pacific Paramount. I really like this card. Um, looks to be in pretty decent shape. I don't think it'll 10. 
does have a little bit of whiting down here. So if you're in the store, this stuff in my hand here is all going in the store. So pretty cool though. Uh, any Jeter guy out there might want this. So like I says, I'm digging through bargain bins now. A lot of stuff's going through and just being put into the store. Um, Stadium Club. Uh, James, and I believe this was his rookie because it said 99 draft pick onto it. Wasn't really too sure offhand until I looked at the back and, you know, you just see the Miami numbers on. So I'm pretty sure it is. I was trying to think and I didn't want to sit there and keep looking up every single card there because when you're trying to go back in time to remember this stuff and you don't see this stuff a whole lot, you, you just can, it's just one of those things. It's almost like all the newer cards and stuff trying to figure out what the pricing is. You got to pull your phone out. Emmett Smith, Super Team Card. These were really cool from back in the day. Let me move it over here a little bit. Um, from Stadium Club, picked it up because what the heck. Another thing you don't see a whole lot of, Tory Holt Rookie Cards. Figured somebody out there might be interested, so pick that up. This is going to stay with me, though. I, should, I forgot about this. The Mario Lemieux Ice Card. Just because I'm a Penguins fan, pretty cool overall. Not numbered or anything like that. One, two, three, four. Okay, this is the last card from that first uh, set that I went through. I had a look. The Griffey Triple Pay, I just picked something out because it was like six or five bucks type deal. All right, this was uh, from another vendor. Yeah, four of them. Okay. Derek Jeter, Perennial All Stars from Tops. Whiting, of course, and stuff like that in the back. Front of it looked pretty nice. Top Stadium Club, Griffey. Say 94. Not seeing it on here. Oh, wait, it's over here. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to read that without a magnifier. No, that's right, 94. 94 Stadium Club Griffey. Found this into the old cheap boxes, too. 48 out of 50 numbered. Carl Malone, jersey piece, upper deck. Pretty cool when you find stuff like that, especially serial numbered. And finally, another Superman, Michael Jordan. Every time I see Jordan stuff, I try to give it a quick glance over without the old microscope. Um, just stuff that eventually I'll probably send in if they ever do value again. If not, like I said, if I see stuff that's, you know, not going to be able to go, it'll either go in a store or out to uh, D.C. So let's move on to the vintage pile next. I think it's how I had to set up. So, I already put these in card savers because so they will go off to grade one day. Do these one by one here. So, story with this, uh, there was an older gentleman there. And he had, like, some crazy, like, prices, like, percentages off and stuff. So, first thing I picked up was this 60 Tops Mazeroski. I don't think this is going to get, like, a super high grade. My opinion was, hopefully, these get a minimum of a four onto it or better. But I picked up these next three vintage cards very, very cheaply, um, which was surprising overall. There's the back. The old rival all-stars of Mantle and Boyer. This one a little bit more rougher condition, but hey, it's got Mickey Mantle on it. You can see the crease right here as well, too, into it. Probably going to be like a PSA 1 or something onto it. I mean, you can see it on the back, too. I mean, I basically picked this up for pennies on the dollar type deal. Um, With Mickey Mantle, you know, stuff sells, stuff like that there. Figured what the heck, we'll grab a hold of it. It was really, really cheap. I mean, it comes back PSA 1, it comes back PSA 1, but it'll be something like a vintage lot. This was the stud in the whole thing. This is where I banked the whole uh, deal off of was this Kofax from uh, 1960 Tops. If I can get to focus. There we go. You guys can see the corners are not ex really, really bad on this. Centering is off. 
I'm be- I was hoping maybe four or better on this. We'll see. But for the price that I got it for, it- it's worth a chance just to see if it's going to come back. And I believe that mark there was on the uh, case that you guys see now. It might be on the card, actually. I might have missed that when I was looking at it right there. But we'll give it up and give it a chance, see what happens on to it. Kofax stuff was hot at one time frame. I think it's still going to pick up stuff down the road. But we'll get it graded. It deserves to be put into something just like the mantle. Last one came from a dealer I picked up uh, the 6 for 5 from. And he had some really nice stuff in his display case. Just sitting there talking for a while. And I decided to pick up two Carmelo Anthony's. And just to show you guys this, this is the first one. This is out of NT. I believe it was 1718. Yep, 1718. And just look at this. One, two, three, four color patch out of 25. Just a really nice looking attractive card. Um, the patch is what pops on it when people see it. So I picked that up and I picked one more up. Basically, we looked these. Well, I found this one here on eBay. This one here, we kind of went around with it because there was an older comp that I could find. And basically, we put a comp, and I think he took off a little over 20% for me on these. So, really, really nice looking patch here. You got a three, a four, and a two. But out of 25, another one from NT should be the same year. Yep, 1718. Gotta see my hands a little cut up there. That's why I've been trying to keep it off screen. Been jamming it, sticking in stuff in the top loaders here recently. But pretty cool, pretty cool overall. Again, it wasn't like a super, like where I spent a whole lot of money at a show. Um... A lot of it I was looking at was mostly vintage. There were some vintage sets there and stuff, but, you know, it's just guys that put sets through through the years. I was put on to a lead to a show next weekend, and I want to say it's like two and a half, maybe three hours from here. I'm thinking about going up to it. It's in, oh, it's in Indiana. It's above, right around Evansville, Indiana. I can't remember the name of it now. Newburgh, Newburgh, maybe Newburgh something like that, Indiana. And I was told there's a guy that come out there with these big boxes of vintage that are like 10 cents a pop. So I'm thinking about making the drive out there next Saturday and seeing just what all they have offhand. For some reason, I think they're an hour behind. I got to look up the show stuff and everything on to it. But I'm thinking pretty much I might roll out to it, and then there'll be a Louisville one the following weekend, too, that I'll end up hitting up for the month. But overall, I'm really happy with what I found out there. Um, I, w- I would say half the dealers are willing to work with you on to pricing. And as, you know, everybody always says, you know, if, if you're going to a show with cash um, and people know that you're not out there just playing around with pricing, they'll they'll pretty much sell. And right now, I've seen, like I said, half of them, I'd probably say we're selling. Like wanting to move inventory, and the other half were being like overpriced onto their stuff. And just some of the stuff I've seen people that brought out there, I'm like, I don't know how that's even going to move it all out here. But, you know, I'm just looking at it from the aspect of myself. And, you know, you get a ton of people going a lot of times to these shows. So anybody at any time would come through and just start buying stuff as well. But that's about it, everybody. Take care. Have a good, uh, re- a uh, good week coming up here. Hopefully your pick for the Super Bowl was good. And I will catch you guys next video.